Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. And this week we actually have five topics, all very interesting. Uh, it's pretty rare where we have actually good topics for the entirety of the show, but this is one of these. So uh, we're going to be talking about the Inspire 2 that is getting discontinued. This is, uh, well, a bit of a surprise, but this could be actually a hint to something pretty cool. We're going to talk about this massive, and there's no other way to say it, a cargo drone by Nautilus. And then uh, we'll talk about hotel drones that are being used in the conflict in the Ukraine right now. We'll talk about something important, the, the Super Bowl TFR, which, uh, well, this is what I'm going to call our Don't Be That Guy segment. And then lastly, we'll talk about DJI that's in the news again for, well, some links to the Chinese government, which is a surprise, not a surprise, kind of controversial, but we'll get to all of that. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing this week is uh, coming from DJI, the Inspire 2 is going to be discontinued in February. And um, this is not really all that shocking. The, the DJI uh, Inspire 2 has been around for quite a long time. Uh, personally, my favorite drone to fly, I think uh, a, a great uh, beast of an aircraft where you can do a whole lot of things with it, especially if you're into video uh, videography. But um, the DJI said that the following products are expected to be sold out in February, after which they're going to stop making them immediately. Uh, this is potentially a hint that the Inspire 3 is right around the corner for later this year. Uh, our friends at Drone Excel have leaked the information that uh, the Inspire 3 may be coming as soon as September of this year. So we'll be keeping an eye on this. Uh, there hasn't really been a roadmap from DJI at this stage about what the next drone is going to be, but uh, it looks like the Inspire 3, possibly even the Mini 3, uh, would be the next drone that we can see uh, popping out from DJI. So uh, kind of a good news. I think it's going to be interesting interesting after the Mavic 3 uh, came out which internally I keep calling the Inspire 3, but it's not. Uh, but the Mavic 3 uh, had a recent update. We talked about this last week. Uh, a great little drone now put all together with all the different updates. Uh, probably one of my favorite drones to fly at the moment. I think it, it packs a lot of different features that are interesting to the way that we do our operations. So uh, we'll keep you posted on the Inspire 3 and kind of see what, uh, what potentially could happen right here. Okay, the next thing this week, this is really interesting. Um, this is... Um, what I would call a gigantic drone. I don't even know if you could call it a drone, but again, it's uh, it's going to be controlled from a distance. So yes, it is. Uh, this company called Nautilus Drone claims that uh, they're going to be able to reduce air freight costs by 50%. And the way that they're going to do this, they're based in San Diego. Uh, they're going to offer four different sizes of drones in their plan. And one of them called 130T, 130T is the largest and uh, they ha it has a maximum takeoff weight of 900 955,000 pounds, 955,000 pounds, okay? Uh, they say it's uh, suitable for intercontinental flight with a range of 5,880 miles, almost 6,000 miles of range. Uh, again, Kind of a different category than what we typically talk about in this show, but I thought this was really interesting. Uh, they have another uh, type of drone called the N3.8T. I don't know who's in charge of doing these names, but if you're listening, this is not really an easy, uh, <laughs> this is not a great name for your drones. But anyway, uh, that has a maximum takeoff weight of approximately 19,000 pounds, and that would be able to carry uh, what's called an LD3 container, which is a pretty standard container uh, in the cargo world. Uh, and that would have a maximum weight of 8,500 pounds. So uh, if you want more information, we're going to put links down in the description and you can take a look at uh, all that. The next thing this week is the hotel drones that are being used in the Ukraine. As you may be aware of, there's a bit of a conflict right now going on between Russia and the Ukraine. And... Um, the Ukrainian side of things is using hotel drones that have been donated by uh, local businesses and charities um, in order to not be militarized and weaponized, but in order to provide overwatch and do some recon uh, for that side of the conflict. So uh, I thought this was interesting using kind of, um, you know, commercial grade drones in order to do this kind of thing uh, during, uh, during such conflict. Okay, the next thing, very important, please, please, please pay attention. If you live in the California area uh, near Inglewood, you know the Super Bowl is coming right around the corner on February 13th. Uh, we'll talk about it again next week as we get closer to the event, but there will be a TFR uh, for the Super Bowl again this year. This happens every single year. Uh, the uh, TFR is gonna go on on game day uh, uh, right around 2.30 uh, p.m. It's a 30 nautical mile radius around the stadium, 30 nautical mile radius from the surface all 
the way to 18,000 feet. So uh, drones are going to be prohibited inside of that TFR, obviously. Uh, there's a link to the FA uh, website, fa.gov slash Super Bowl, if you want more information, if you're going to be in the area. Um, we say this every year, and every single year, people get caught flying their drones in the Super Bowl. Uh, not a good idea. Uh, you you will you will get caught. I can guarantee you, you will get caught. And the FAA does prosecute this, so does the FBI. So uh, if you want to be on the receiving end and and be that person and and be famous, then uh, that's your chance right here. I don't recommend it, but uh, it can get really expensive. Uh, please tell your friends around if you live in that area and you're gonna go over there. Uh, if you see anybody pulling out a, a drone, please, please, please. Uh, help educate them and, and save them from uh, getting arrested and uh, and possibly detained. So, okay, um, the last story this week, kind of an interesting one, came up uh, late in the week as we were about to record. But a Washington Post report um, mentioned that DJI has some still very close ties to the the Chinese government. I was going to say U.S. government, but no, it's not true. <laughs> the Chinese government and is receiving state funding. Uh, this is despite repeated claims. Uh, time and time again to the contrary from DJI themselves. Um, as you may know, DJI is not a publicly traded company, so the list of investors is actually uh, pretty hard to come by. Uh, this uh, company uh, that the Washington Post reported on is, uh, is an American company that was able to, well, I guess, find some information. And then they were able to uh, discover that DJI was receiving funding from, I think, four different sources. Um, this has been pretty controversial, just like the whole DJI has been controversial for a while now. And uh, some people are calling this a hit piece that's uh, very close to an upcoming FCC vote uh, regarding DJI. We talked about this before. One of the FCC commissioner uh, who's on the way out has been making a lot of waves about potentially no longer approving DJI from the FCC standpoint. So uh, this will be interesting how this article plays out in the decision that's upcoming. Uh, we'll tell you more information when we find it. But uh, again, this is the ongoing saga for over a year now, well over a year uh, against the DJI uh, drones. So one last thing this week, we just recorded a podcast with uh, Thomas Brinkman from AirHub. Uh, if you remember last week or maybe even two weeks ago, we talked about AirHub, which is this app that allows you to uh, not send any information to DJI while you fly your DJI drone. A lot of you had feedback, a lot of you had questions. So we uh, brought them onto the Pixel Drone Show that we do every Tuesday uh, with Haya and Kara. And we actually wrote down a lot of the questions that you guys had asked in the comment section of our video and, uh, and asked these questions. So if you're interested, it's about an hour long, uh, a great discussion where uh, we kind of go over why they decided to go that route, create AirHub. Uh, they're based in, in Europe. We talk about the difference between uh, European regulation and American regulation and where all of this fits. So um, again, if you're interested in that topic, I think this would be a, a great uh, a thing to listen to. So that's it. That's all I have this week. Week. As always, like, subscribe, uh, leave your comments. We actually turn the comments on in our videos, uh, unlike some other YouTubers. And uh, we'd like to hear from you guys. We'd like to uh, hear your point of view and sometimes even uh, go back and forth arguing or, or discussing some of these topics. So um, don't hesitate to go down in here and we'll see you uh, next week.